In this video, we will focus on uniformly accelerated motion. First, we will introduce the fundamental formulas for this type of motion. Next, we'll outline a problem-solving strategy and the steps necessary to successfully solve any uniformly accelerated motion problem. Lastly, we'll relate these ideas to freefall and the uniform acceleration due to gravity near the Earth's surface. There are four formulas for uniformly accelerated motion provided in your data booklet. Each equation contains the initial velocity of the object, represented by the variable u. Three of the four equations contain the final velocity of the object after acceleration, represented by the variable v. Three of the four equations contain the acceleration of the object, represented by the variable a. Three of the four equations contain the time of acceleration, represented by the variable t. And lastly, three of the four equations contain the displacement of the object, represented by the variable s. Notice that each equation is missing a single variable between final velocity, acceleration, time, or displacement. This will help us to correctly select a formula to use when solving problems, which we'll see shortly. The derivation of these formulas is beyond the scope of this video, which will focus on applying these formulas to solve problems. We're going to walk through an example as we introduce a seven-step problem-solving approach. Following these steps will ensure that any problem involving uniformly accelerated motion is easily solved. We need to solve the following problem. A car accelerates from an initial velocity of 2.0 meters per second at a rate of 3.0 meters per second squared for 4.5 seconds. What is the car's final velocity? Our first step in our problem-solving strategy will be to draw a diagram or picture. Here we've shown the initial and final location of the car, with the length of the velocity vectors roughly indicating the initial and final relative velocities. We've also included an acceleration arrow to indicate that acceleration occurs in the same direction as motion. Our next steps are to list the given information and identify any unknown information. These steps are often completed together. We'll annotate our previously drawn diagram with the relevant information, including variables with the information provided. We know the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the time, and are looking for the final velocity. We do not have, nor do we need, any information about the displacement. Next, we'll select an appropriate equation to use for our calculation. We have four equations in our data booklet to select from. It's not necessary to list all of the equations. We can instead refer to the data booklet. We want to pick an equation that contains the information we have and the information we want to solve for, but does not contain any missing or irrelevant information. Since we don't have or need displacement, we want to select a formula that does not contain displacement, but does contain initial velocity, acceleration, time, and final velocity. The equation we'll want to use is v equals u plus at. At this point, if needed, we can rearrange our formula so we're solving for our unknown. We want to solve for final velocity, so there's no need to rearrange this formula. We can now substitute in our values, taking care to check that our units will work out as required. Our velocity is in meters per second, our acceleration is in meters per second squared, and our time is in seconds, so there is no need to convert any units. Once our values are substituted in, we can solve. The final velocity of the car is 15.5, or approximately 16 meters per second. The problem we just explored was straightforward, but uniform acceleration can be tricky when directions come into play. Acceleration, velocity, and displacement are all vector quantities, so direction is required to define each of these values. In words, we can describe direction with vocabulary like up, down, left, right, north, and south. Mathematically, we can use positive and negative signs to describe opposite directions. Traditionally, the directions east, north, right, up, and forward have been assigned a positive direction, while the directions west, south, left, down, and backward have been assigned a negative direction. Although all problems can be solved with these traditional direction signs, it's possible to simplify our calculations. We can assign any direction as positive, provided we are consistent in our work. Sometimes it's easier to assign a traditionally negative direction as a positive direction. In general, if the velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, that direction can be defined as a positive direction. For example, if a car moving east accelerates east, then east would be best defined as a positive direction. Conversely, if a car moving west accelerates west, then west would be best defined as a positive direction. If the velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions, then one direction is defined as positive and the opposite direction is defined as negative. For example, if a car moving east accelerates west, then east could be defined as a positive direction, while west would be defined as a negative direction. It's important to define positive and negative directions in each uniform acceleration problem you'll solve. 
Let's explore some more examples of uniform acceleration. First, a car is traveling west at 30 meters per second and decelerates at 5.0 meters per second squared. In what distance does the car come to a stop? Let's follow our problem solving steps. First, we'll draw a picture of the motion. Here, since the car is decelerating, the initial velocity is in the opposite direction of the acceleration. Next, we'll list the known information and identify any unknown information. If we read the question stem, we see only two values, the initial velocity and the acceleration. We'll assign the initial velocity as positive and the acceleration, which is in the opposite direction, as negative. We have a third known value, but it's provided in words. The car comes to a stop. This means that we know the final velocity, which is zero meters per second. We want to find the displacement. We don't have any information about, nor are we going to solve for time. Therefore, we want to select the formula from our data booklet that does not contain time. This formula is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. We can rearrange for the displacement, substitute in our values, and solve. The car's displacement as it slows to a stop is 90 meters. In our next example, a ball rolls horizontally from rest with a constant acceleration. We are provided position data for the ball, measured every 0.50 seconds. We must find the acceleration. Again, we'll follow the same steps. First, a diagram. Here we've drawn four balls to match the data table. Because the ball is accelerating, the displacement during each 0.50 second interval increases. Now we can identify our known values, time and displacement. We're told the ball rolls from rest, meaning the initial velocity at time zero is zero meters per second. We have a lot of information but can simplify this problem. Because the acceleration is constant, we can use any two time points to solve. We need three known values to solve for an unknown, so we'll need the initial velocity, which we only know at time zero. Therefore, we must use time zero, and we'll also use 1.0 seconds, so time is an easy to use whole number. Now we can select a formula. Since we don't know the final velocity, we'll need to pick a formula that does not contain final velocity. This formula is s equals ut plus 1 half at squared. We can rearrange for the acceleration and substitute in our values. Because our initial velocity is zero, we can cancel the ut term in our rearrangement. The acceleration is 32 meters per second squared. Now let's shift our focus to a specific type of uniform acceleration, free fall. When an object falls freely near the Earth's surface, it will accelerate downward at a constant rate due to the force of gravity exerted on the object by the Earth. All objects will accelerate at the same constant rate provided they do not experience air resistance or another friction force as they fall. The Earth exerts a gravitational force on the object directed towards the Earth's center. If this force is the only force acting on an object in free fall, then the object accelerates downward toward the Earth at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. If other forces, like air resistance, act on the object and oppose its motion, the object will accelerate downward at a rate slower than 9.8 meters per second squared. Sometimes the variable g is used instead of a for acceleration due to freefall. If you are doing a calculation involving freefall for a multiple choice question, it's often easiest to round the value for acceleration of freefall to 10 meters per second squared. This is helpful even if you have a calculator available. Let's look at an example of uniformly accelerated motion due to freefall. A ball is dropped from rest and falls toward the earth without air resistance. We must determine the displacement of the object 5.0 seconds after it is dropped. Let's begin by drawing our picture, including an acceleration vector downward. Now you may notice we are only given one number in the question stem. We need three of four variables in any of our equations to solve. So how do we do this? Well, the question stem states that the ball is dropped from rest. This means that the initial velocity is 0 meters per second. We also know the ball falls, meaning that the acceleration is the acceleration of free fall, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. We now have three known variables and can solve for the displacement with the formula s equals ut plus 1 half at squared. For any free fall problems where the object is dropped from rest, the initial velocity is 0 and we can exclude the ut term from this equation. When we substitute our known values, it's worth noting that assigning down as a positive direction makes this calculation a little bit easier. We find a displacement of 122.5, or approximately 1.2 times 10 to the 2 meters downward. To summarize, there are four uniformly accelerated motion equations, each with four variables. Provided three variables are known, an equation can be chosen and a problem can be solved. 
When solving problems, it's effective to follow a common set of steps and strategies for all problems. Briefly, the basic steps include drawing and labeling a diagram with known and unknown values, selecting an appropriate equation, isolating for and solving for the unknown quantity. And lastly, for problems involving freefall, the acceleration of the object is generally not provided, but is known to be 9.8 meters per second squared. For such questions, it can be easiest to define down as a positive direction.